Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me, guys? Hi, everyone, can you hear me? Me escuchan. Do you hear me, guys? I need to know if you can hear me. Can you guys hear me? Yes, no? Yes, teacher. No, teacher. Wait, someone said yes, someone said no. <laughs> Do you hear me or not? I hear you. Okay, good. We have one that hears. <laughs> Diana dice que no, oh my God, Diana. <laughs> but maybe it's your volume. Have you checked the volume in your laptop, Diana? Everybody else can hear me? Can you please confirm? Oh, Jesus, it's raining. <laughs> I'm sorry for the noise, it's my window. <laughs> All right. How are you guys? How are you today? Happy Tuesday. Well, happy end of Tuesday. I want to know how are you guys? How was your day? It was fine, teacher. I'm only ending my dinner. All right. <laughs> Not a problem, Diana. Enjoy. Thanks. All right. What about the others? How was the day? Super, super fun day, busy day, light. <laughs> In my case, it was a crazy day, guys. <laughs> busy. As it was crazy, just crazy. All right, so now listen one moment. What is this? We're gonna start. Yesterday, some of you were mentioning that some of you were mentioning that you guys didn't understand completely. Okay, so we're gonna go. We're gonna go there. I want to know which parts you understood or which parts you didn't understand, all right? So where do we start there? Do we have volunteers, someone that wants to tell me what you remember from yesterday, what we should review? <laughs> if you don't remember, that's fine. That's not a problem, okay? Um, déjenme ver si están todos, quiero. Well, we have nine participants, so we're missing some people. Last night, we were talking about reported speech. Remember? In what scenarios can we use reported speech? Can you tell me? In which scenarios would you use reported speech that you think you could use it? In which scenarios? To say something other people say to us. Exactly, to repeat or recap, right? Something that other people have said to us, that's one, correct? What else, guys? Right. So listen, we're going to do we're going to go to this student's manual. I'm gonna come, I'm gonna share it with you guys, you know, one moment so we can review it. Okay. What we saw yesterday was a general version of the reported speech, right? Um, it's not absolutely everything, it's just the general version. So here's what we're gonna do. Specifically yesterday, we were meant to work with. Uh, imperatives. Do you remember what are imperatives? I told you yesterday. What is an imperative? Teacher, it's yep. a command. Exactly. An imperative, it's a command. It's basically you giving an order to someone, right? An imperative is something that must or has to be done, right? So it's not if you want or if you wish, no, imperative means it has to happen, right? So we're gonna use, we're gonna check that again. 
Okay, we're gonna review it a little bit. We're not gonna go general as we did yesterday. No, we're gonna go specifically in the imperatives for reported speech. I know we saw we read this yesterday, but we're gonna refresh it so we can move forward. Okay. So I need two volunteers, one person to read this, the box that is up on the first part, and then another one to read this box. I need two volunteers, please. Thank you. Let's see. Anel, please help me with the first box, okay? And then I need one more volunteer, please, to read the second box. Diana, please, help me with the second one. Manuel, go ahead. Okay, to express to a third person the word that somebody has said, use reported speech. In reported speech, we express what somebody has, has said in our own words. In this what case, are you reading, Manuel? Sorry. Are you reading? Uh, Mm, you need to how to use report speech. Mm. Oh, okay. Ah, sorry, teacher. No worries. Ah, yeah, yes, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. mm, how to use report speech imperatives? Okay. Mm -hmm. A sentence expressing a command, request, advice, or suggestion is called an imperative sentence. You should learn from your competitor, but never copy Jack Ma. Jack Ma recommends to learn from our competitor, but never to never copy. Correct. So that's the first point we were seeing yesterday for imperatives, specifically when you are repeating the order or the command that another person gave or said, you're going to use reported speech. And one important part is that if you have more than one verb in the sentence, you will use the preposition to, right? If I say, Jack Ma recommends to learn from our competitors, but never copy, it's incorrect. I have to say, but to never copy when I am reporting it because it's a second verb, okay? And then let's go with Diana, please. Okay. Some specific verbs are required to change an imperative sentence into reported speech. For example, requested, ordered, advised, suggested, instead of the, of the reporting verb says and told. Never give up. Entrepreneurs recommend to never give up. The most important thing in e-commerce, Jack Ma said, is act with passion. The most important thing in e-commerce, Jack Ma suggests, is to act with passion. Thank you. So Diana is telling us some specific verbs they need to change an imperative sentence into reported speech, right? Especially when we're re retelling basically the story, right? And some of the verbs that we can use to report an order or a command or an imperative sentence, the verbs that we can use to announce that, to start reporting, we can use requested, ordered, advised, suggested, right? When we are doing reported speech, normally in a normal scenario, for example, we use said and told, right? For example, we have the yesterday's sentence. Um, I think it was Nelson. Nelson said, I love my mother. Cuando yo lo reporto, when I report, I said, Nelson said that he loved his mother. Nelson said, because it's a normal sentence. It's not an order, it's not an imperative, it's not a command, it's not mandatory. He was just saying something random, correct? But if I am going to re report, if I'm going to report an order, a command, I want to change the announcing verbs. I don't want to use told or say, I prefer to use requested, order, advice, or suggestion, specifically when we're reporting orders, okay? And we have examples here that Diana read. The most important thing in e-commerce, Jack Ma said, is act with passion. Okay, this is the normal one, right? And then if I am reporting it as an order or as a command, the most important thing e-commerce, in e-commerce, Jack Ma suggests, 
is to act with passion, right? So any of these ones can be instead, it can replace said or told, all right? So here's what we're going to do right now. I want you to write a recommendation. Everyone is going to write down one recommendation in your notebooks, all right? You're going to write one recommendation to be better at work or to be better at studying. It can be any type of recommendation, but it has to be a suggestion or an imperative, right? Something that you say, for example, in, if you want to lose weight, you have to do exercise, okay? Or it's good to drink water every day for good health. It can be any sentence, but it has to be a recommendation. That's what you're going to do right now, okay? It can be an order, it can be a command, it can be imperative or a recommendation. It can be either. I'm gonna give you two minutes. You can write one recommendation or one order as you wish. Write it down and then we're gonna do an exercise. It's 8.12, so at 8.15 we can start. If you need help with vocabulary or how to say something, let me know and I can help. How many sentences do you write? One. Right now, just one sentence, and we're going to wait for it. Command imperative. Yeah, it has to be a Suggest. sentence that you either an imperative or a recommendation, as you wish. And, okay. and rewrite the the. Mm -mm. Uh, no. no, right now only write your idea. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. oh, okay. We're gonna give two more minutes until eight fifteen, so we can start. So everyone has finished the sentence. Okay. Okay. We have one more minute so that everyone can finish writing the sentence. And it's up. It's 8.15, so we can start with the sentences. Here's what we're going to do. It's gonna be similar to last night. We're going to report what our classmate says, okay? Our classmate is going to read one sentence and we're going to report it in reported speech. However, we cannot use the words said or told to report 
Mm -mm. We can use requested, order, advice, or suggested when we are reporting, okay? Uh, okay, okay. Are we all clear with that? So we're going to start. Remember, when your classmate reads one sentence, you are going to report that sentence. You're going to do the reported speech, just repeat that sentence. You cannot use the verbs said or told to report it, no. You will use the words requested, order, or advice, or suggested when you're going to report it, okay? So let's see. We have, give me one moment. I need to see your hands to see in which order we can start. Let's raise our hands, please. The ones that we have the sentences finished so I can start assigning you guys. All right. Manuel, you will read the first sentence. Ana Raquel, please pay attention to Manuel and you're going to report what he says, okay? Okay. Manuel. You have to clean your bedroom. So yes to my mother. Repeat, please. Okay, you have to clean your bedroom, suggested my mother. He said, uh, instead of, mother. remember, we cannot use said or told. We can use any of these words. We can only use he, he advised, he suggested, he ordered, or he requested, anything like that. Okay. He requested my mother. I, I forgot. Repeat, Manuel, Manuel, please. Okay. You have to clean your bedroom, suggested my mother. Uh, okay. He uh, requested uh, you have to clean uh, your bed. Mm, okay. No. So he's telling you. Um, you have to clean your bedroom, my mother suggested. That's what he said, right? And we're gonna write it, we can, we can work with this. Uh, let me share you with you the screen, please. Let me share the screen with you one moment. Mm. Whiteboard. Okay, we're gonna write the sentence that Manuel said. Manuel, please, you said. You have to clean your bedroom. Suggested my mother. Okay, this good is day. good evening. So, in this lesson, we are learning right now that when we're doing reported speech for orders or suggestions or imperatives. We can use those words. We can use suggested, requested, advice to report the sentence. Okay. So now that we're seeing it here written, how would you change it to report the speech, Anna? You can start using his set. We're going to do the exception here. You can start using his set. Do you want someone to help you from the class, Anna? We can use the, we can use the, how do they call it? The joker, <laughs> we can use a joker. Yes. Okay, does anyone want to see if they can help Anna? Or how you would do it? I have an idea, teacher. Let's hear you, Diana, please. Manuel's mother suggested to clean his room. That's one his bedroom. Uh -huh. Manuel's mother. Oy. Manuel's mother suggested he cleaned his bedroom. 
Does anybody has a different version that you would do it? Does anyone have a different version? Yes. Okay, let's hear. The other, the other version. version. How would you do it in reported speech mode? The, uh, in this, in the other, other form. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, Manuel said. Uh -huh. His mother, his his mother, uh -huh. uh, advice. He cleaned his bedroom. Advice he cleaned or advice him to clean. I bath. Uh -huh. I bath him. Yes. Uh huh. To clean. To clean his his, his bedroom. Correct. Okay. Which of the two sentences is correct? What do you think, guys? Surprise, surprise! Both are correct. <laughs> Both sentences are correct. The one that Diana said, Manuel's mother suggested he clean his bedroom, is correct. Manuel said his mother advised him to clean his bedroom. It's also correct. Remember the, the rule that I told you yesterday. Not all the time you are going to be changing it to the past of the past. Sometimes you can use the closest verb or the closest version, all right? So this is just for practice and we're gonna be doing the same. So thank you, Manuel. Ana, you're going to read your sentence, please. And we need one volunteer to, who is going to change Anna's sentence. Do we have a volunteer? This Hello. is the last time we're gonna practice this. So now is your moment. <laughs> Anna, Hello. read your sentence, please. I have a I have to go at the supermarket. Um, somebody's talking and it's not Anna. <laughs> Anna, please go ahead. Okay. Wake up early. Recommends my father. My father recommends. That's the my father recommends. Okay. Wake up early. My father recommends. Okay, who wants to change this sentence to report a speech? Who wants to try? The ones that have not participated. We have volunteers to try to change this report of the speech. Oh, we can do it all together. Okay. But we need to we need someone to start with this. Let's see. Let's see if we can find someone here. What about Miss Olga? Olga, are you there? Would you like to try? Yes, teacher. Okay. Let's try, Olga, please. Um, Anna. Uh, Anna is the one that said this. Okay. Anna's father suggests she wake up early. She? Suggest that she or suggested hair. Le recommend this video. Hair. Hair. Uh -huh. hair. Yes. Uh -huh. Oh, I'm dead. Suggested hair. Y luego que sigue? ¿Qué proposición? To wake up. Correct. To wake up early. Uh -huh. And that? In that case, Olga has already changed it to report the speech, right? Anna already said the sentence and Olga already reported it, right? Anna said, wake up early, my father recommends. And Olga said, Anna's father suggested her to wake up early. And that's it, that's reported speech, very good. Olga, you're going to read your sentence, please. Mm -hmm. Do you have your sentence ready, Olga? 
Ana said. Okay. The, is that your, your sentence, your recommendation or your imperative sentence, Olga? Mm -hmm. Or did it, you didn't have time to make it? Because I think you connected late, right? You can I say any, a, a recommendation or an order that you want to give or anything. <laughs> I don't know, teacher. Okay, we can try with another person who has another sentence that wants to share the sentence. Your your regular sentence. Who wants to share it? Okay. Let's see. Me, teacher. Jorge, please. I suggest sleep early to wake up at five a.m. tomorrow. Early. To wake up at 5 a.m. tomorrow. Okay, this is a very good sentence. Okay, because it's a complex one. I suggest I sleep early to wake up at 5 a.m. tomorrow. Who wants to change this to reported speech or who wants to try to change it to reported speech? Let's see. Someone that hasn't tried yet. We're going to check. Someone that has not participated. We want to see hands. Um, let me ask Mario Villeda. Mario, are you available? Are you there? This is here, teacher. Perfect. Okay, Mario, let's try to change this to reported speech. He said... I suggest to sleep early to wake up at 5 a.m. tomorrow. Mm. I'm gonna I'm gonna follow your, your sentence again. I suggest we sleep early. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To wake up at 5 a.m. tomorrow. Okay. Now, here is a something something different. Is this reported a speech or is this direct a speech? What do you think, guys? If you remember yesterday, I told you, when you repeat literally what the person says, you are doing, re you're not doing reported, you're doing direct speech. When you repeat exactly what the person said, we call that direct speech, right? So this sentence that Mario gave us is direct speech, right? Because he said, he said, and then he reported exactly the words, right? I suggest sleep early. Because he repeated exactly the words, he did direct report. Now we want to do the other version, reported speech or indirect, it's the same. How do we do that? We can start with that one. He said, and then that he suggests, and then because they have, these are two verbs, suggest is one verb, the next one is okay to wake up, to sleep early. To sleep early, to wake up at 5 a.m. and so on. And here you have the two scenarios, right? Mario gave us direct speech, which is basically repeating exactly what the other person said. That is correct, that is perfect, that is acceptable, but it's not reported speech. And then in reported speech, we are only going to add a few words to express it, right? He said that he suggests to sleep early to wake up at 5 a.m., right? So do we have comments in here? Comments, questions until here so far? 
Yes, no. Tell <laughs> me. Uh, it it depends for the for the original sentence. Uh, the reported speed change. Um, the imperative. What do you mean? I'm not following the question. When when the when the sentence for uh, of for Evela. Because in the report speed uh, is the word that we are the, the, the word that. Oh, to report, yes. Report, we can add yes. we can add it. Yes, we can add it. Mm -hmm. He said we can also remove it. He said he suggests. I mean this part, this one is optional, right? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is not mandatory, but usually I was telling you yesterday, when it's written English, it's better to include it, okay? So listen, we're gonna go to the platform. Yesterday I was talking with uh, Manuel, right? We were talking with Manuel and he told me about the platform exercises. Has everybody completed the exercises for from Friday and yesterday? Yes, teacher, but mm -hmm. I have a problem with the platform in number 2.2. .2. Correct. That's the one you were mentioning, right, Manuel? It was the same. Yes. Okay. It's me, yes. Jorge, but... Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's just that Manuel was telling me about that same one yesterday. So I'm going okay. to share the screen with you guys because this exercise that Jorge mentioned right now all the other ones from you that have not been there yet, when you see it, you're gonna go like, there is something wrong in here. <laughs> there is something that doesn't make sense, right? So it I'm gonna- look, uh -huh. look like an easy sentence, but I don't have the answer. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the, first okay. one, the first one is easy because we have a subject in here, right? He said, exercise regularly. And the, and the platform is giving me the indication that to report this sentence, I will use the word tell, okay? So personally, I would write something like, he told me to exercise regularly. That's the way I would do it, okay? But this one is easy because we have a subject. We can identify it, right? But yes. if but if you pay attention to the second one or the other ones, some of them don't have a subject and they are more tricky. And the platform expects you to read the mind, <laughs> to read minds or to, I don't know, super powerful. Okay. But would you please do the, the first one? The first one, he said, uh, he told me to exercise regularly. I try, but, but it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what, I'm going, what I want to get to you guys. That's, that's, we're going to get there. Don't worry. And then if you read number two, somebody help me read number two, please. Don't turn off the lights. Mm -hmm. So you could say, Pulanita ordered me to not turn off the lights, but I don't know if it was a he, if it was a she, if it was an animal, we don't know. And the platform is not giving us that information, right? So if you see in the, in the instructions, you don't have any other instructions, right? That is why for this time, I will make the exception and we're gonna show this, the answers as the platform says, okay? So take advantage. <laughs> This is a one in a lifetime opportunity. <laughs> okay. Once so this in a is life, yeah. Once in a lifetime opportunity, right? So here yes. is the answer, right? He told me to exercise regularly. Okay. Remember, yesterday I was telling you when you have two verbs that are close together, maybe not one next to the other, but if they are very close together, you will use the preposition to in the middle. He told me to exercise regularly, right? 
And this one, it's impossible that you know that it's a he, right? <laughs> because it's not mentioned anywhere. So that's why I'm giving, I'm showing you this, the answers, right? He ordered not to turn off the lights, okay? Number three, who can, I want you to read, I'm showing you the answer, so you're gonna have to read the sentence and the answer, guys. Who can read number three? The side says, don't drink and drive requests. Uh -huh. The answer, Manuel? Okay, the sign request not to drink and drive. Exactly, right? Again, pay attention. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity showing you the answers. <laughs> number four. Who wants to read number four? Do we have volunteers to read number four? She said, she said keep quiet. Answer. She's instructed me. She instructed me. Instructed me. Instructed me. She instructed me to keep quiet. Very good, Harry. Thank you. And number five, please. Can I have a volunteer to read number five? Me, teacher. Please. He called her, go and lie down. Answer. He told her, go and lie down. Okay, thank you. This one is basically the same if you notice. <laughs> this one is exactly the same, right? Okay, then we're going to the second portion of this exercise. Oh, but this one I don't want you to see yet. I'm not gonna show you that one because that's the class for today. <laughs> so we will see it later. Okay, so, but I wanted to help you guys with this one because they were, these ones, these are not formulated in the correct way so that you can answer <laughs> properly, okay? So it's not, it was not going to be fair. So I didn't help you with that. Everybody got those? Can we stop sharing that one? All right, yes. we're gonna move forward. Okay, now we're gonna be getting a lot of vocabulary this month, okay? In fact, there is an exercise I want you guys to try. How, do you know how many words you can speak per minute at this point? Well, teacher. Mm, all right. So we're going to do that exercise for the ones that want to know, for the ones that want to try. And let me tell you, the minimum acceptable, the minimum of words, right? Acceptable for per minute should be 18. That's like the lowest a person in this level should have, right? 18 words per minute. Meaning that you, if you give me 19, 20 or more, it's even better, right? But the minimum acceptable per minute per person should be 18 words. And that's because 18 words is a good standard for someone to sustain a short conversation in English, right? You guys speak very good English at this point, so you should be able to give more than 18 words in a minute. So here is how it is going to be. We're going to do it like that. I am going to show you the, it's not the, the chronometer, it's a stopwatch, okay? Now the timer, I'm going to set the timer. Um, I don't know if you can say it, for one minute. I'm going to set the timer for one minute. And the person that is going to take the test, when I say three, two, one, when I say go, the person starts telling words in English. It can be any word. It, they can be verbs, they can be adjectives, call anything, as long as it has two things, full English, not translating, and not repeating. Okay? And also it's not acceptable to give the same verb, like go, went, gone, that's, <laughs> that's tricky though, no, that's, that's not valid, right? I will only count one if you give me the same verb. So who wants to try? In my opinion, my humble, no, my, my opinion is not humble, honestly. <laughs> In my not humble opinion, <laughs> you should take the test right now. And then every week we can do this and you can measure if you have more words per week, how many words have you increased, right? And 
so you can see how many words you can learn in one way. All right. So who wants to start? Who wants to try first? Remember, all you have to do when I say go, you start saying words in English. When I say stop, we will count your words. All right, we're gonna start with Manuel Antonio, okay? So when I say three, two, one, when I say go, you start, Manuel, okay? And we're going three, two, one, go. Butter, water, pencil, shoes, socks, refrigerator, uh, box, clothes, tie, Pants, cell phone, case, boat, coat, cap, hat. Ring, hair, side stores, energy. Drink. Bear. Pen. Read. All right, Book. time is up. <laughs> okay, time is up. So you gave me a total, and write this down, write it down, your, your score. You gave me 24 words. 24 words in one minute. This is your first test of the month, okay? You gave me 24 words in one minute. So that is good. Remember, the minimum was 18, right? Okay. 18 is the minimum. Now, you have to keep your record. I'm not going to keep your record, guys, because I don't have that much space in my phone. Don't ask me why. <laughs> but you have to write it down so you can remember. Next week, when we do it again, you will check if you have more words, right? If you notice, you get nervous at some point. You get like, mm -hmm what do I say right <laughs> it's not that you didn't have vocabulary it's that you get nervous but this type of exercises is going to help you learn more vocabulary so in a future conversation you will not you will be speaking non-stop <laughs> okay, because words will just flow so who wants to try next who wants to check how they are how you're doing let's see uh -huh. Come on, guys, this is for self, how do they call it? Self-competition. You only compete with yourself, right? If you have 20 words right now, next week you can have 25. And at the end of the month, you will have one word per second, <laughs> 60 words per minute, <laughs> right? But if you don't know how you're doing, how are you going to compare yourself? Okay. All right. For the ones that decide you want to take the test, you can prepare. <laughs> Where you can prepare. But this was an introduction to what we're going to do right now. We're going to check some vocabulary, right? We're going to do an exercise related to vocabulary. Now, give me one moment because these letters are kind of, I don't know why this web page has the, the letters in that like gray color, almost invisible. But let me know if you're able to see it, guys. I think that's me. <laughs> Can you see it enough? Like, okay, good. So we're gonna start checking this vocabulary, what it means. Right now it's basically a reading exercise, right? It's up to you if you want to write down the words and memorize them later on. But right now it's, an, um, it's a reading exercise, but every five words, we're gonna work in groups and we're gonna make a small, com a small conversations trying to incorporate. So after five words, we're gonna go work in groups, okay? So let's just start reading. I need a person to help me reading, to help me with this, there's three. So we need three volunteers for these three paragraphs. Okay, Jorge, please help me with paragraph number one. And I'm going to call other volunteers. Tatiana, help me with number two, please. And Diana with paragraph number three, please. Okay, entrepreneurs, they're the reason we have Facebook, Airbnb, LinkedIn, YouTube, 
and many other companies that dominate our daily life. They're people who turn their ideas into small or eventually big business ventures. Thank you, Tatiana. In recent years, Chile has established itself as a hub for entrepreneurship. Chile's infrastructure, public policies, and positive government perspective on entrepreneurship have led on an excellent ecosystem for entrepreneurs. Thank you. And number three. If you are an aspiring entrepreneur, you're already an entrepreneur, or you just think entrepreneurship is awesome, today's post is for you. Read on the learn 20 key entrepreneurship vocabulary words. Very good, thank you. Okay, so we're gonna start with five words. We're gonna check what they are, what they mean, and, we're gonna, and they, they have examples, right? So we're gonna start with the first one, entrepreneur, or entrepreneurship, right? Um, Ideally, we don't mention the last E. This one is like, this one is silent. We say nur, right? Entrepreneur, ideally, but you will hear a different version. And they are all fine, fine, right? So um, we need five volunteers for the first five words. To read the first five words. So let's raise the hands please so we can assign. Juan de Dios, you will read number one and where are the other hands? What's happening here? <laughs> I will ask Juan Carlos Rivas. Juan Carlos, are you there? Yes, teacher. Juan Carlos, I will ask you to help me with number two, please. Jose Jonathan Vigil, help me with number three, profit. Jorge, please help me with number four, startup. And let's see. Maria Concepcion, are you there? Yes, teacher. Thank you. Maria, you will help me with number five, investor. Okay. Juan de Dios, please begin with number one. Entrepreneur, entrepreneurship, a person who starts a businesses, the activity of starting businesses for profit. Sample, the entrepreneur took a big risk when she quit her job and decided to pursue, pursue. pursue her idea of creating her own technology startup. Example, the Chilean government encourages, encourages. Entrep encourages entrepreneurship because it brings creative, creative, creative? Ex creative, excellent new business ventures into the country. Thank you, very good. Okay, so the first one we have entrepreneurship. So entrepreneurship or entrepreneur. This is the person, this is the business, all right? <laughs> entrepreneur is the person, right? I am an entrepreneur because I sell perfumes online, right? And I have an entrepreneurship. It's an online store, right? Or I can say a startup. Um, where is the word startup here? Startup is the same as an entrepreneurship, except that is usually bigger, right? Entrepreneurship can be any kind of a small business that you start from by yourself. But a startup is something that is usually an entrepreneurship that it's on a bigger scale, like a company already established company but it's a startup right because it's a beginning it's beginning so we go with number two venture please who was reading venture, <laughs> venture a risky project or business idea example my lat latest venture is developing developing a new smartphone application even true is a risky venture i hoping i find some big investors correct thank you so venture is just basically short for adventure <laughs> right no no big surprises here no science no rocket science here 
Okay, number three. Profit, finance and gain. Example, entrepreneur take financial risk with the hope of profit from their business venture. Correct. Profit is the money that you gain from a business, right? Example, yeah. if I have a product that costs me $10 and I sell it for $15, those $5 are my profit, okay? It's the money I gain from a business. Number four, please. Start up a newly established business. Example, when it first started, Dynamic English was a startup language institute. Their founders, Ted and Andrew, are both entrepreneurs. Thank you, very good. Startup, that's what I was telling you guys. Entrepreneurship, it's a small business venture, right? But then a startup, it's the same as entrepreneurship, but it's in a bigger scale. It's already a company, right? It's already been established as a company, but it's really new. That's why we call it startup. And number five, please. Investor, a person that puts, puts money into a project or a small business with the help of eventually receive profit. Percent. Receiving profit. Receiving profit. Excuse me, teacher. Receiving, and that's receive, is receiving. Receiving? Profit. Mm -hmm. Profit. Mm -hmm. Example, when the entrepreneurs created their eco-friendly cleaning products, this day they were for fortunate to secure several inventors to support their growth. Mm -hmm. So investor is the person that gives you money. <laughs> they invest in you or in your project. They give you money for you to start your business or to grow your business, etc. right? But they will receive a compensation afterwards, right? You have to repay it. So the money that they are investing, right? So remember, every five words, we stop, we go to the breakout rooms and we create a conversation using some of those words. You don't have to use the five words, no, but at least one or two from them, okay? Right now we can use entrepreneur, entrepreneurship, venture, profit, startup, and investor. You can include any of those words, minimum two, right? Of those five into your conversation. It can be a short conversation, something like, hey, I heard Fulanit is, ha is having, isn't, started an entrepreneurship he's selling watches on the internet and you can go like really and do you think that is a good business do you think he has good profit i imagine yes but i don't really know we can check with him right anything like that it has to be a casual conversation nothing too serious nothing too complicated okay the point is that in that conversation you try to use minimum two of the five words we have used right now we have checked right now okay you will go in rooms from two to three participants okay so the rooms are going to be open right now you will have five minutes no i'm going to give you seven minutes because it's a short conversation right so seven minutes it's 8 54 let's say 8 55 so at 9 902 we can start, we can come back, okay? The rooms are open right now. You have seven minutes to create your conversation, including some of the words that we just saw from the vocabulary. You can start joining the rooms.
Mari me puede escuchar. ¿Me oye, Mari? María Elena, ¿me escucha? ¿Me oye, María? Hello, teacher. Yes. Hi. ¿Usted es la que está escribiendo en el grupo que la sacó? No. Uh, no. no. Ah, va. Ah. Yo, yo venía en el carro y no me podía bajar porque está lloviendo. Pero ya me bajé. Vaya, me dice si puede ingresar al room number two, si no la, le, le vuelvo a mover. Ah, sí, ahorita aquí. Dice sala ah, para el grupo. Ok. Hello. Hello, teacher. Uh, my company is a problem de connection. Um, what about Juan Carlos? Juan Carlos, are you there? Um, I'm no. gonna move you. For, I'm gonna change you from group, Nelson. Okay. Okay. I will Thank change you in a moment. Mm -hmm. Yes. Dígame. Good evening, Miss. Hi, how are you, Christian? Uh, fine. <laughs> I think I'm fine. Perfect. Yes. Right now, I'm just waiting I'm for the others. 
Oh, okay. Don't worry. Right now, we're just waiting for the others to return from the breakout rooms. So. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's why you hear silence. <laughs> By the way, they will be back in three minutes. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. No problem. This meeting is being recorded. We're returning. So we're returning to the main session. So don't worry. <laughs> uh, okay. Mm -hmm. We're just gonna give 20 more seconds for the other ones to return. Okay, so breakout rooms are closed and everybody's back. Okay, so before I start asking you to give the conversations, did everyone finish the conversation or do you need more a few more minutes? To complete it. Sure. Uh, sorry, we need a, a, a more time because mm -hmm. uh, some words are not clear for me. So I was okay looking for the definition. So okay, does everybody else share Tatiana's opinion? Do you need a little more time for your conversation? Yes, teacher. Perfect. All right, it's nine o four. I'm gonna give you six minutes until nine ten. All right. The rooms are open already, so you can go back to them to finish your conversations. Did someone ask me a question? Uh, no, Maria, we are working in the groups. Um, I think you are Maria Elena Guadalupe. You are in room number two. You should be with Jose Jonathan and Carlos Antonio. Not sure if you are. Sí. Were you able to be with Pero, them? Es la conversación de la página 17. No. No. Right now it's an improvised conversation that you have to create using the words from the vocabulary that I put in WhatsApp group, Maria. I put five words in the chat of WhatsApp. I gave you entrepreneur, venture, profit, a startup in the WhatsApp group. I sent it. Mm. Those five words. So you have to make a conversation invented, improvised, using two or three of those words. Not every word, <laughs> but two or three at least. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Perfect. You can start uh, joining the room with Carlos and Maria and Jose, Jonathan, Maria.
We're just gonna wait 25 seconds until everybody else returns to the session. All right, before we start with the conversations, I'm gonna go with the list. So be ready to say present or here, okay? Ana Raquel Villalta Rivera. Present. Thank you. Carlos Antonio Escobar. Present. Thank you. Claudia Maria Melendez. Diana Elizabeth. Here, teacher. Thank you. Diana, how do you pronounce your last name? Chereguino. Chereguino, okay. Interesting. <laughs> Jorge Humberto Vela. Present. Thank you. Jose Jonathan Vigil. Present, Miss. Thank you. Jose Rodrigo Hernandez. Jose Rodrigo Hernandez. Juan Carlos Rivas. Present teacher. Thank you. Juan de Dios Mejia. Present teacher. Thank you. Linda Yvette Marquez. Linda Yvette Marquez. Manuel Antonio Palma. Present. Thank you. María Concepción Cerón. Yo pedí que por tocarme con ella, así va, pude ella, no iba a dar una buena María presentación. Concepción Cerón. Se confundió todo y no me dejó. María Elena Guadalupe. Como quien dice, no me dejó hablar de los otros y. María este Elena Guadalupe. En Can you hear me, guys? En ciencia. Subí. Gracias, ah, Manuel, your microphone. Como no es. Manuel, your microphone. <laughs> Sorry. No worries. Okay. Um, vamos con María Elena Guadalupe. Peñate. Is she here? No. Then we go with Mario Ernesto Villeda. Present teacher. Thank you. Um, Ernelson Gabarrete. I'm here, miss. Thank you. Norma Carolina Villeda. Hi, Ol Hi, Olga Marielena. Marielena, ok. Que la había puesto missing Marielena. <laughs> ok, thank you. Norma Carolina Villeda me contestó. No, ok. Olga Marlene Gómez. Present teacher. Thank you. Silvia Soleima Rodríguez. Present teacher. Thank you, Tatiana Michelle. Present teacher. Thank you, Wendy Maribel. Yes, yes. Present teacher. Thank you, Cristian. ¿Qué había pasado? Que estuve, que estuve en una reunión <laughs> y no oía. No, 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 esta es la primera, eh, Wendy. Cristian, ah, Natalia, Present. Present. Thank you. Okay, now is the time. We're going to hear your conversations, guys. We have room number one. We're going to check Diana, Nelson, and Olga Marlene. Please. Sorry, teacher, it oh. has to be a conversation. Oh, what did you do, guys? Uh, we create a, a text. Oh, that's perfect. Okay. As long as you the use the words, we're good. <laughs> okay. Uh, and mm. I don't know if I can read it, Tim. Or are you going to take turns to read? <laughs> Okay. Uh, Into one and I start. Okay. Okay, entrepreneur is a person who perceives the opportunity offered by the market and has had the motivation, pride, and ability to mobilize resources in order to meet that opportunity. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, 
and about the concept, we create a, a text using the other words. Uh, we write, entrepreneurships are a good idea if you want to start up a business and have an extra profit. But for this, you are not going to be just an entrepreneur. You have to be an investor too. And in that way, you are going to have a successful venture. Good. That's nice. It, it was a complete text. <laughs> Thank you. Very good. Room number one. Also, that's a very creative way to use the vocabulary. Nice. Room number two, please. We have Carlos Antonio Escobar, Jose Jonathan Vigil, and Maria Elena Guadalupe. Yes, no terminamos. Oh, okay. Try to coordinate right now and I'm gonna give opportunity to the other groups and we can check back, okay? Uh, let's go with room number four. We had Manuel Antonio Palma, Silvia Suleima and Tatiana Michel. Okay. Okay. Uh, hello, Tati. I have a friend. Uh, he started up a new business. It's a cafeteria in downtown. Oh, really? Uh, he's the investor too? Uh, yes, uh, he's the owner. Let me uh, introduce him because he's with me right now. Well. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, <I'm> sorry. <laughs> uh, good evening, my dears. Uh, I am Manuel Palma. Uh, I was the idea to create a um, uh, I am an entrepreneur. I hope uh, the sales uh, uh, will be uh, very well. And well, uh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Manuel. You are the owner of the new cafeteria. Yes. Yes, oh. I am. Okay, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. A conversation is a conversation, so we're good. <laughs> Thank you, room number four, for the effort. Very good. We're going now with room number five with Jorge Humberto and Juan de Dios Javier. Okay, teacher. Uh, we have a small conversation with Juan de Dios about uh, practically four of the, uh, the words that you said we can the session. All right. And um, we speak about uh, start startup. For example. Um, we we say in that moment that uh, it is the same that entrepreneurship, but with the difference that this apply for a big big business or a, or for a company. Delicious. Thank you. <laughs> and that's my participation. Now, Juan de Dios could add some, some part. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, we were talking about entrepreneurs too. Um, I, I, I told to, to Manuel that I have a friend that he started uh, saving products uh, in, by Facebook. And right now, uh, the way is no, it was not a good idea because uh, he, he don't have uh, good profits uh, at this moment. Uh, at the beginning, he was earning um, a good percent of money, but right now it, 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 the business is down. 
All right. Okay, very good. Thank you. Just remember, when we're talking to a person, we say, that's it. He does it. <laughs> okay. All right. Other Thanks. than that, very good job. Thank you. Room number five, Jorge and Juan de Dios. And we have room number six right now, Ana Raquel Villalta and Mario Villeda, please. Okay. Mario, start the conversation. I, I don't have the conversation. Can, can I read the conversation, teacher? I'm sorry? Can I read the conversation? Uh, yes. The Mario don't uh, cap the, uh, the conversation. Say, uh, yes, you Anna. Share, you can share the screen. So, you have the screen? Yeah, share the screen. Man, start the conversation. I think Maria is asking you if you can share your screen, Anna. Do you want to share your screen? I can give you access. Hi, Anna, how are you? I am great. I have an entrepreneurship here. What did you sell? It's a restaurant. What kind of restaurant? It's about seafood. Do you have any investors? Yes, my investors are my parents. Okay. All right, that's what we were asking for, a short conversation, right? And you delivered, guys, so very good, thank you. Now Thanks. we're going back to, who were we missing? Was it room number three? Let me check, let me check. Room number two, we were missing Carlos Antonio, Jose Jonathan, and Maria Elena. Are you guys ready? Maria Elena, are you there? <clears throat> Sorry. Yes. Okay. Um, I need to share conversations. Screen. Maria Elena, your Maria Elena. Hi, Jonathan. Hi, can you see the procession? Yes, I see. You will start. Hi, I am Jonathan. Nice to meet you. I'm Maria. What do you do for a living, Maria? I started on my own company. Oh, wow, you are an entrepreneur. Yes. I have always wanted to be an entrepreneur. You should become one. It is seem very risky. risky. I won't lie, it is this. How do you deal with the risks? Big risks. Bring bigger returns. Nice. That is a good way to look at it. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, room number two. You delivered. <laughs> Very good job. Okay. So now we're going to continue with the vocabulary and we're going to check these other words. Okay. We're going to go from word number 11 until word 15. Okay. We have the first one. So we need five volunteers, five people to read. One is going to read 11, another one's going to read 12 and so on. So we need five volunteers. Raise your hand please so I can assign them. So Tatiana, please help me with number one, number 11, trademark. Jorge Humberto, please with number 12, side hustle. Number 13, Maria Elena, take risks. We need two more volunteers to read, 14 and 15, please. Jose Jonathan, help me reading number 14. And Juan de Dios, please let me assign number 15, pitch. Okay, let's start, trademark. Read, read teacher. Who? Only you... read. Yes, yes, we're only reading, yes. Uh, volunteer, what number? Um, who is asking me? 
María, ¿qué me está preguntando? No veo. No, Wendy. Wendy. ¿Qué dijo que alguien podría ser voluntario? Ah, yes, Wendy. Um, le voy a dar la número 16, Wendy, por favor. Number 16. Associate Partner. Le voy a leer todo lo que está en el 16, pero cuando lleguemos ahí, ¿ok? Ok. Thank you, Wendy. Give me one minute, guys. My window is open and it's raining. One moment. This window, for some reason, makes a lot of noise. <laughs> okay, so let's start. Number 11, trademark. Tatiana, please. Trademark, a symbol, words, or a phrase officially registered for a company. Example, an important part of the develop, developing of a, a company company's brand is to be sure it has an official trademark. Exactly, thank you. It can be a symbol, it can be some words, it can be a phrase, right? It's similar to a logo, but it's, it can be anything, right? It can even be a logo. A trademark, it's something that helps you identify a company. Like, for example, um, we see Nike. Nike, their logo is like, just do it, right? And that is their trademark, right? We identify that with Nike automatically. Number 12, side hustle. Jorge, please. Side hustle, slang for your side project or business. Example, I work full time, but my side hustle is a little startup that does graphic design and media work. Thank you. Side hustle, it's informal for an extra job, <laughs> for a second job, right? For a, a part time job, for example. If you have a full time eight hours or more job, that's your, that's your, let's say your first, your main job. But if you have an extra job, like a part-time or it's a business or anything like that, we call it a side hustle, right? For example, I work eight hours in a different company. Teaching English is my side hustle, right? It's my part-time job. It's my second job, let's say, right? And it doesn't take me eight hours, so it's not my full-time job. So we call it a side hustle. Number 13. Take risks. To make choice with uncertain outcomes. Example, taking risk is a huge part of entrepreneurship when they started their own company. They invested large amounts on Quiet their jobs. Quit their and jobs. So quit their jobs. Mm -hmm. Quit their jobs. Huh? Um, so they weren't sure their business were success. Very good. Thank would you, Maya. Success. Would succeed. <laughs> would succeed. Correct. So taking risks, exactly what it sounds like, right? <laughs> take be risky right if something is uncertain not sure about the future it's a risk but taking risks in a company right especially if it's gonna be an entrepreneurship you will have to take risks number 14 launch launch to initiate a start or release example the startup is launching its fifth product next week hopefully it will be successful. 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 Mm -hmm. Launch, for example, when a new web page is going to be open, we say launch, right? Launch, it's like el lanzamiento o el día que se abre una tienda, un negocio, right? That's the launch, the day that something starts that is released, all right, or initiated, right? And number 15, please. Pitch, to propose a business's idea, usually with the goal of obtaining a contract or funding example. We pitch our idea to the board of the company and they gave us the funding we needed to begin the project. Very good. Pitch is when you give an idea, or you propose an idea, a business idea, of course, right? To a different partner. Number 16, Wendy, please. 
associate partner when two people start a business, their each other's associates or partner. Example, my associate does client relations for our startup and I manage logistics and finances. Example, my business partner and I met in college and we've been working together on business ventures ever since. Very good, ever since. Associate or partner, right? The person that you start a business with or that you work with, it's your it's either your associate or your partner, right? Business partner or business associate. Exactly the same thing. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing this one with you. And we're going to go to the book. We have an activity right there in the student's manual. If we go to student's manual, we have an activity. And in Paris, you're going to prepare a presentation with tips for startups, entrepreneurs wishing to start their business online. Okay. For this exercise, it's not going to be a short conversation like the one we just did a few moments ago. No. In this one, you have to prepare a presentation, right? In this presentation, you are going, it's not more like a conversation. It's more like an exposition, right? That you're going to do, like a presentation. You're going to give tips and tricks, tips and tricks for people who want to start their own businesses, right? In here, it says who wants to start business online, but in reality, you can do it if, if it's physical, doesn't matter, right? If possible, try to incorporate quotes from your favorite entrepreneurs or from people you have heard that they have good, good sayings or good idioms, right? Regarding businesses, okay? So remember, you have to create a presentation. And in this presentation, you're giving tips and tricks to the people, you're giving advice to the people that want to start a business. You can tell them what to do, what not to do. You can quote other people, right? And you can give a su suggestions from other people also, okay? So for this exercise, I'm going to give you 10 minutes. I'm going to give you a total of 10 minutes. You are going to work in the same groups. Um, if possible, Make sure if your group is three, is three people, make sure that all three people have a little participation in the presentation, okay? That way I can check, right? How, you're, how is everybody doing? So I'm gonna give you 10 minutes. Remember, it's not a conversation. It's an, like an exposition, a presentation you will prepare. You're going to give suggestions, tips, tricks, advices, what to do, what not to do, when to do it, when not to do it, right? to people who want to start their own business, okay? And it can be any type of business. For example, if you wish to start a pupuseria in San Salvador, my first suggestion is to really study your market. Study your market because pupuserias in El Salvador are very common. So you have to think, right? What am I going to do different? What am I going to sell that is going to be different? What are my proposals going to give extra that are going to make people want to come to my business and not to the other 20 proposals in San Salvador, right? And I start giving you tips and tricks, what not to do, what to do, ideas, right? Maybe you could try this, you shouldn't do this, etc. right? So I'm going to give you 10 minutes. We will return to the main session after 10 minutes, but we will check if you require more time or not, okay? Before we start with the presentations. So let me open the breakout rooms. And it's 9.36, starting from 9.37, you have 10 minutes to work on that presentation with your group. Cristia, let me know if I can add you to one to any of the groups, please. <clears throat> Cristia, can you hear me? Yes, Miss. Yes, yes. Do I add I you to any group? What? 
Is, uh, is it okay if I add you to one of the groups that are going to start working right now? Okay. Okay, I'm going to add you on room number six. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. What happened, Mario?
What happened, Diana? Oh, <laughs> no worries. We're just gonna give three more minutes. I don't know which group were you in. And number one. Okay, I'm gonna send you number one. And Silvia Suleima, which Silvia, where are you? Silvia, can you hear me? <laughs> you just so. connected, right, Silvia? Yes, I have a problem with the internet. Oh, okay. Were you in a specific group, Silvia, or did you just get connected to the class? Um, me salí antes de, de que fuera los grupos. Oh, okay. So, well, they're going to finish in two minutes. So, we're going to check. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, right now, just stay there, Silvia. <laughs> okay. All right, we should all be back by now, back to the main session. And before we, before I send anyone to start, did you guys finish or do you need more time? A few more minutes to finish your presentation. We need more time. To uh, feel Perfect. All right, I'm gonna give you four more minutes, then we come back, all right? The rooms are open right now. You can go back as soon as possible. Mm -hmm.
Okay, we should all be back by now. We're just missing 10 seconds. And we can start. So we can go with, give me one second, please. Okay, we're gonna go with room number one, please. Diana, Elizabeth, Nelson, and Olga. And okay. when do you think? I'm okay. trying to check my, mm -hmm. my screen. All right. I'm trying to check my screen. Uh, you can share yours. You can share right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Tips or advantage for entrepreneurs. Uh, for an entrepreneur, it is important that there are people who encourage them to continue with. <clears throat> Where is the volume? I don't, can you guys hear her? No, teacher. No. Um, Olga, we cannot hear you. I don't know if you were the one sharing the screen. Olga, you are in mute. Your microphone is closed, Olga. Hello. Hello. Mm -hmm. Hi. A recommendation for entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. Number one, submit the cleaning product photos. Number two, achieve to start a business no matter what. It's to be clear about your goals and make sure that they are achievable. Achievable. Number, yes. number three, yeah. the inventory of children online is that many people see the product and share it with their contacts. Mm -hmm. uh, number four, offer a offer a naked and extractive product for consumer. Number five, uh, see a static point for product deliver. All right, very good. Is okay. that all room number Thank one? You. Yes. No. Oh. That, that's all. That's all? Okay, very good. Thank you. You did a good presentation room. I know sometimes we have challenge with the audio or the internet, but don't worry, you did a good job, okay? Thank you so much. We're gonna go right now with room number two in this case, let me see. We have Carlos Antonio, Jose Jonathan, and Maria Elena, please. Oh, okay. Um, let's go with room number three then. Um, well, room number four. Manuel Antonio and Tatiana Michel, please. Okay. Tati? Puedo compartir mi pantalla. Yes, you should be able to do it. Oh, okay. I want to share with you my entrepreneurship. Oh, I is very big. Uh, the name is Michela, Micheleando. Uh -huh. This already exists because this is my entrepreneur entrepreneurship. Your side uh, hustle. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. okay. 
we offer this uh, by online apps like Hugo, uh, like Payos Ya, and Uber Eats too. Uh, the main principal thing is just uh, have sales and we have many different kind of Michelada. So uh, the advices or the tips, tips for a good entrepreneurship, uh, Manuel is going to talk about that. All right, thank you. Okay. Uh, the, what, what we uh, don't do is uh, about uh, Jack Ma recommends uh, we should learn from our competitor but never copy. Also, mm -hmm. uh, George Olsen, founder of the Access Platform, uh, said, uh, we don't lead your uh, success as an entrepreneur to the success of your idea. Your job as and the success of an uh, entrepreneur to literate through idea to get to the right one. Part of that process is successful to proving your ideas are not good. Failure is part of making progress. And when, when we uh, get started, a good entrepreneur is dying. In many ways, uh, becoming an entrepreneur and starting out on your own is scary, but it doesn't not have to be. A lot of successful entrepreneurs started their own business while it's working another job to pay the bills. Mm -hmm. There is no shame in starting lowly, just start. That's Very all. Good. Those are good tips. <laughs> yes, teacher. And also, uh, you have to very hard work, hard work hard worker person because you don't have to give up at the first time you have to try and try and I think that is the the, the best important thing because at the beginning never is is a is a really good business you have to it's not so easy very, at the beginning <laughs> yes, yes. But no it's not too easy so you don't have to feel uh, sad or you have to try. So for me, that is the, the best uh, tip for when you start a, a entrepreneurship. Very good job, Tatiana and Manuel. Thank you for the tips. All right, for the rest of the groups that have not passed yet, um, we have, let me check. Breakout rooms, here we are. Okay, we are missing room number four. Five, which is Jorge, Humberto, and Juan de Dios, and room number six, Ana, Cristia, and Mario, and room number two is pending. So these three groups, um, make sure to coordinate with your classmates, the ones that, is, that are in your group. The three people in room number two and the, three, and the people in room number six and in room number five, coordinate with your classmates. And you can give me the presentation tomorrow at the beginning of the class. You can give me your presentation about what we're doing right now, right? So if you didn't have time to finish, you can take advantage tomorrow. But the first thing I will do tomorrow when we start the class is ask for your presentation to those three teams, okay? So let me just take a picture before I forget. I'm gonna send it there, just a moment. <clears throat> so you don't forget who is missing the rooms that were missing, okay? So work together with your classmates tomorrow and you're gonna do your presentations tomorrow morning. That's gonna be it for tonight, guys. We're gonna check the list, so please be aware. Just a minute. <clears throat> and we have Ana Raquel Villalta. Present. Thank you. Carlos Antonio Escobar. Present. Thank you. Claudia Maria Melendez. Diana Elizabeth here. Cheregino, right? Yes. Thank you. Jorge Humberto Vela. Present teacher. Thank you. Jose Jonathan Vigil. Present miss. Thank you. Jose Rodrigo Hernandez. Juan Carlos Rivas. Present. Thank you. Juan de Dios Mejia. Present teacher. Thank you. Linda Yvette Márquez. 
Manuel Antonio Palma. Present teacher. Thank you. Maria Concepcion, si se puede quedar, por favor, 10 minutos. Or I think she's not here, right? Maria Elena, then, please. Maria Elena Guadalupe. Present. Thank you. Maria, if you can stay for 10 minutes after the class, please. Mario Ernesto Villeda. Present teacher. Thank you. Nelson Gabarrete Merino. I'm here, miss. Thank you. Norma Carolina Villeda. Olga Marleni Gómez. Present teacher. Thank you. Silvia Suleima Rodríguez. Present teacher. Thank you. Tatiana Michelle Sánchez. Present teacher. Thank you. Wendy Maribel Zabaleta. Present teacher. Thank you. And Christian Natalie Erazo. Present teacher. Okay. Thank you, Christian. Okay, everybody, have a good night. Get good some night. rest. And I will see you, see you tomorrow to continue yeah. practicing. Good, good night. night. See, see you night. tomorrow, guys. Hey, good night. See you tomorrow. Let's see. Bye -bye. Good night. See you tomorrow. Bye. Hello, you're having a nice night. Thank you, good night. Um, who is say Maria or... Hi, Maria, how are you? Hello, are you there, Maria? Maria Elena, me escucha. <laughs> All right, how are Hello. you? Aquí algo perdido. Oh no. <laughs> I, am, I am lost. Oh dear Jesus, dígame Maria, ¿qué le ayudamos? ¿Qué necesita refuerzo o repaso? Es que, bueno, sinceramente la junto a tres clases como, ahorita está como lo más cargado del proyecto porque te van proyecto ah, okay. casi que vengo llegando a la hora que está la clase y no ah. solo medio la termino uh -huh. entonces las últimas clases que han estado viendo report report uh -huh. um, hemos estado viendo report de speech um, de hecho María exacto um, le digo Eh, Deme un minuto, lo voy a compartir. Le voy a compartir la presentación que estábamos viendo, The Reported Speech, ayer, que era como el resumen de lo de ayer. Ok. So, vaya. Leamos, si, si gusta, me ayuda leyendo esto, María, y lo, de ahí vemos la estructura. You can answer the question. What is it? In two ways, by repeating, repeating, first mm -hmm. spoken direct uh, speech, and by reporting the words spoken direct or repeated speech. Mm -hmm. Okay. When we are speaking in English, Maria, cuando nosotros queremos narrar o contar lo que alguien dijo, ahí es cuando toma reported speech. Hay dos formas de hacerlo. Usted puede repetir directamente lo que la otra persona dijo. Por ejemplo, fulanito dijo, a mí me gusta comer pan dulce. ¿Ok? Ay, no. Si yo solo lo repito, yo le digo, fulanito dijo y lo repito exactamente como él lo dijo. A eso se le llama direct speech. Mira. El que nosotros estamos viendo ahorita es indirect o reported speech. Este es el mismo, es la misma cosa. Reported speech. En esta, nosotros ocupamos verbos para anunciar o reportar lo que la otra persona dijo. ¿Cómo lo hacemos? Tenemos un par de estructuras que seguimos, ¿ok? Por ejemplo, acá, mire, para indirect speech. Leamos esta cajita, María, por favor. Reported speech. Reported speech. Reported speech. So we normally change the tense of the word spoken. We mm -hmm. use reporting verbs uh, like, they, feel, are, 
and when they do the work that so introduced the reported works in versus comments are not good. Mm -hmm. Example, Lems? Example, she said, I saw him. She did a speech. She said that she had seen him. Okay. So, no está diciendo, mi amor. Para el direct, para el reported speech, reported or indirect, es lo mismo, le decía. Para el reported speech, ocupamos verbos como say, tell, us. Cuando nosotros vamos a anunciar, a contar, fulanito dijo que, ese que es la palabra that. ¿Ok? Uh -huh. Por ejemplo, usted dígame una oración, cualquier oración ahorita. My computer is broken. My computer is? Broken. Ok. Para reportar lo que usted acaba de decir, yo voy a decir, María said that her computer was broken. Por el hecho de que reported the speech, lo que estamos contando ya pasó, ya se dijo, ya quedó en el pasado. Por lo general, el reported the speech lo contamos en el pasado. Hay casos donde no se cambia. Si usted me hubiera dicho, my computer is broken, y me dice, my computer is broke, breaks, mi computadora se arruina todos los días. My computer breaks every day. En ese caso yo no lo cuento en pasado, yo lo cuento en presente, no lo cambio. Si es algo que pasa todos los días, digamos, algo frecuente. No, ahí no es necesario cambiarlo. Solo lo voy a cambiar para cosas como escenarios que no pasan siempre, ¿verdad? Usted me dice, my computer is broken. Es algo que ahorita pasó, ¿verdad? Que está pasó, o ya pasó. Pero no es algo que usted siempre va a estar así con el computer broken. Entonces yo cuando le vengo a contar a fulanito le voy a decir, María dijo que su computadora estaba arruinada. ¿Ok? Eso me lo dijo hace cinco minutos. Ya pasó. Por eso lo cuento yo en pasado, María. ¿Ok? Ese es el truco de reported speech, por lo general. Uh -huh. Y le agregamos la palabra that, que es como that. el que. Ella dijo que tal y tal cosa. Uh -huh. so, uh, tell, uh, tell me. Ah, tell. tell. Casi siempre se ocupa cuando se le dice a otra persona. She told, mira acá, she told him. I tell you. You tell me. Ok. Tell siempre va seguido de un objeto. ¿Quién recibe? ¿A quién se le dijo? Ok. Y luego ask, que es como el normal, como ella preguntó si alguien había hecho algo. Ok. Ask es más tranquilo porque es para preguntas específicamente o peticiones. Right? Eso es, eso es toda la esencia o el resumen, María. Exactly. The teacher asks, who is this, right? Um, ahorita solo estamos viendo así como versiones afirmativas, imperativas, órdenes o sugerencias. Reported the speech. Mañana, María, vamos a ver cómo usar este mismo sí. tema, reported speech, en preguntas. Cuando alguien pregunta algo, ¿cómo lo reporto yo? ¿Cómo lo cuento ya en pasado, digamos? Lo que esa persona preguntó. Mañana vamos a hacer eso, reported speech, para preguntas de sí o no, preguntas cerradas, ¿ok? Mm -hmm. So that's going to be tomorrow. ¿Eso va a ser esta mañana? Así Ay, que... <laughs> No me preocupo, María. Así que eso sería todo por este, por este día. Cualquier cosa siempre me puede escribir que estoy en el grupo de WhatsApp. Así que si necesita reforzar algo, siempre déjenme saber. Yo más que encantada de ayudar, María. ¿Ok? Así que Thank you. la veo mañana. Cuídense, descanse. Good night. Gracias.